Morning to you. I'm Paul Glennon. I'm the Canine Development Officer for Devon and Cornwall Police. And all these little puppies here that you can see are our bee litter. And this is this is Molly. She's the mother of these puppies. Um, I'll take you a little tour in a moment uh, around the bee litter and, and give you an insight into the litter and how it's made up. Um, this is our second litter that we've bred this year. We started a small breeding program in June this year when our other brood bitch, Ruby, had seven pups. They're all now seven months old and they're all doing very well out with the puppy walkers. And this is our second uh, litter. These are six weeks old tomorrow. Um, they were born on the 19th of November. Um, unfortunately, the last litter we had, uh, we had a webcam and people were able to see how the, how the litter were developing, but because of the poor signal where we live here, we haven't been able to, uh, to do that this time. Um, and so I thought it would be a good idea just to give you a typical day in the life of the bee litter. So I thought during the course of the day I'll let you see them, I'll introduce them to you. You can see them having their meals, their playtime outside. Um, we'll just give you a little bit of an insight, obviously not as good as a live webcam, but um, we'll, uh, it's better than nothing. So without further ado, Molly, as you can see here, she's with the pups 24 hours a day. She sleeps in here with them. She doesn't feed them anymore. We feed them all the time now, now that they're six weeks. But she likes to be in and around and just to keep an eye on them and break up any squabbles and instill any discipline that needs discipline. This litter is made up of eight pups. There are five dogs and there are three bitches. We've got four black, all black puppies, two gold sables and two uh, lighter sables. At the moment they're all playing on the, uh, we call this wood wool. Um, and I use this to, to get them toilet trained. They'll use the wood wool to toilet. Um, and this helps us in the process of uh, getting them when they leave here that they're, they're toilet trained. But I've only just put this bedding down and they love romping and playing in the bedding. Um, until it's soiled and then they, they tend to avoid it after that. Over there is the, uh, is the vet bedding area. That's where the pups tend to sleep at night. Um, I mean they'll sleep anywhere they can get but at night time they all do gravitate to the uh, vet bed and they'll sleep over in the box. And this here is the, the feeding station that you can see there. I'll show you how that works later on. But suffice to say, I don't just feed them all in one big lump with two bowls, uh, as you'll see very often with a lot of breeders. We feed them all, they all have their individual bowls, so we can make sure that everybody's getting what they need. And we also like to make sure that the pups get used to being handled uh, while they're being fed, so we don't have any potential problems later on with food aggression. So there they all are. All quite relaxed. They're not as big as the, uh, the A letter. The A letter, I was looking at the weights. Uh, we keep a weight guide. Uh, they're all weighed from the moment they're born um, up until uh, six weeks. And looking at the differences of the weights, the A letter were definitely uh, heavier, uh, quite considerably heavier actually. But I think these, these puppies, um, although they're not so big, they're definitely a little bit faster um, and lighter in construction. Um, and I think really they've probably been about a week ahead of the A-litter in terms of their development. I'm just trying to pick out little BB. There she is, over there, playing with the yellow ball. She's just taking it from the little sable puppy. BB was the puppy we were really worried about. See her there now carrying that yellow ball. We were worried about her from a very early age. She wasn't putting on weight. You probably saw the blog that I did uh, three weeks ago. She, um, she was always under the heat lamp sleeping um, and she was well beyond the development of the others and we were quite concerned but uh, by putting her on mother individually for her feeds that seemed to bring her through that little sticky patch and now she's probably the liveliest one in the group. But the, th the three black 
poppies that you can see here, they're all bitches. And the other black pop over there, who's having a morning siesta for some reason, he's the uh, the only black male out of the, the four black pops. Interestingly, the, the mother, as you can see, Molly, who's down there, just keeping an eye on her puppies, keeping an eye on proceedings. She, as you can see, is a dark sable. And the father of these puppies is a, a very light sable, a dog called Quasimodo is a German import uh, who sired about 45 litters in Germany. Um, obviously both of these dogs, Molly and Quasi, both obviously carry the black gene uh, as a recessive gene because we've got four totally black pops um, in this litter. So I'll probably just sign off here now and when we return it will be a feeding frenzy because they like their food. Um, you won't be able to hear what I've got to say so there won't be any narrative or commentary over that. So I suffice to say you'll get the idea from just watching how, how this, the system is set up. You just look here now I've added on this little section here around the outside of the cage so I can funnel them out down through the patio doors along the path and then they can run around in the garden to their heart's content. That's something Molly likes to do. She, she likes to lie there with her nose licking and staying in contact with the puppies. But it's not very often she actually climbs into the exercise and bed area now.